Good morning. Glenn here over at Fine Line Farm. Another frosty southern Ontario day. About minus 15 this morning. Oh, hello. Don't normally see them down here. Anyway, just uh, thought I'd give you a quick introduction to the cow herd. These are Canadian lynch linebacks, otherwise known as linebacks. They are the cornerstone of our farm, kind of the driving engine of the whole thing. So just a little introduction to the breed. These cattle were developed by Mr. Lynch uh, starting sometime in the 1960s and uh, he continues to breed them to this day, although he's only down to one breeding female left. I started breeding these cattle back in 2007 and I've maintained a closed herd of purebreds ever since. So what is a lineback? Why did Mr. Lynch create the breed? Back in the early part of the 1900s, in specifically in the Leeds, Grenville, Frontenac counties of Ontario, very rugged landscape, very boggy or rocky, not a lot of in between, not a lot of good farmland. Farms were very small, typically five to 10 cow herds. A uh, few bigger herds, but mostly homesteading, not necessarily productive farming. Uh, smaller family farms, raising what they eat, selling the excess to pay the mortgages and taxes. And that was basically um, how the farms survived. So cows in that area weren't necessarily uh, high-end purebreds. Uh, that were starting to take off at the time. Uh, there was, you know, Holstein's jerseys. Most of the beef breeds were starting to create herd books, early 1900s. The people in that area, most of them were just trying to survive. They didn't really care about the pedigrees on their cattle. Now, Mr. Lynch's father was a cattle drover. He bought and sold cattle from these people all the time, uh, from the local farms and sold them to local farmers. and. Uh, would even send train cars of cattle to Montreal for slaughter. So he was kind of the local cattle dealer. So Robert saw every kind of cow imaginable. And uh, the ones that always caught his eye were these kind of skunk colored cattle, um, otherwise known as a lineback. And in the 1960s, he realized that there wasn't really any of them left. Uh, the small herds were all selling out. Farming was getting bigger, more productive. The herds that were left uh, of cattle in the area were, you know, breeding to the more advanced breeds like Holsteins or Angus, depending on whether they were dairy farmers or beef farmers. And uh, there really wasn't any of these lineback colored cattle left. So the few that he found in the area, he purchased them and then uh, kind of closed his herd and just kept breeding them and bred them from there. And then he ran a small slaughterhouse, even though he was kind of always a dairy farmer at heart. So he'd, you know, milk the cows that had extra milk. He'd raise pigs and raise veal calves and whatnot. Um, but ultimately their main source of revenue was beef. But he was one to just only ever feed grain that was you know farmed locally and buy in whatever hay he can get locally and rent at pasture and just always kind of maintain the cattle on well just the land that was there so what these cattle really are are just a snapshot of what the cattle were at the turn of the century we use the term dual purpose now reality is dual purpose means they're not really good at anything uh, doesn't mean that they produce beef like an Angus cow and milk like a Holstein cow or like a Jersey cow at the start of the century start of the 1900s I should say pretty much all cows were dual purpose you either milked them if you needed milk if you didn't need milk you left the calf on them you raised a good steer and when the cow was done milking if she wasn't in calf you butchered her as well 
So that's kind of what dual purpose really means. Um, and they're a land race breed, meaning that they were developed um, for their landscape because he didn't bring in a lot of different feed. He didn't bring in different genetics from different herds. Look at the barrel on that heifer. Because he didn't bring in genetics from different herds, he didn't use AI and, you know, trades, trade bulls back and forth from across the continent or across the country. He developed cattle that were very unique to his climate and created a breed essentially from just a bunch of mongrel crossbreds and uh, didn't really realize what he was doing until he had done it. So they are a representation of what old dairy cattle would have looked like in that time period. And as far as the color goes, it was the color that drew him to saving these cattle. At one point it was said that the lineback pattern is an endangered color pattern amongst cattle worldwide. Uh, another time I read that, you know, these were probably ancestors of the Gloucester and Glamorgan cattle from England. Reality is it's just a color pattern and it's just um, people that know bovine genetics and color genetics could explain it better than me. But essentially, these are not a black cow with a white line, rather they are a white cow with colored sides and they are referred to as color sided cattle. The color sided gene is carried by most uh, so-called park cattle like the British white and the um, white park cattle of England and most of the uh, white shorthorn breeds, actually most shorthorn breeds. As opposed to Charlet that are white cattle but they tend to carry the dilute genes so when you cross them with say black cattle you get a gray calf or you cross them with red cattle you get a cream colored calf. These the color side at cattle would be white and cross them with a colored animal you're either going to get you know the black animal or a white animal or you'll get a white animal with black sides. So you know, the color pattern isn't even really that unique. There's cave paintings of wild cattle that are tens of thousands of years old and uh, they've got the line back pattern on them. So it could be recreated with other breeds, but these breed rather true. And um, like I say, they're, it was the color was kind of the gimmick that uh, made Mr. Lynch want to keep them in the first place. Hello. Yeah, you want a good scratch. And uh, because of that, he kept them pure and created a unique breed, which just kind of preserved the genetics from his childhood. And they do breed rather pure. A few years ago, there was a DNA study done on the cattle um, by the University of Saskatoon. They were wanting to know how inbred they were because they had been a closed herd of no more than about 20 breeding females at any given time and uh, on a scale of positive one to negative one with positive one meaning that they don't really breed that true they'd almost be crossbreds and negative one meaning they're extremely inbred they showed up as negative 0.01 so pretty much right in the middle proving that genetically speaking on paper, they are a unique breed. They are a unique gene pool that when you breed a lineback to a lineback, you will get a lineback. And uh, they're not extremely inbred to the point that you gotta wonder what's going on with the genetics. I do talk a little bit about line breeding in another video I made the other day that I'm gonna post as well. And uh, yeah, so as Mr. Lynch would say, there's it. That's what a lynch lineback cow looks like. These are some of the calves. Most of these animals are dry right now. Calves will probably, the ones that aren't dry, will have their calves weaned another month or so. And uh, most of these dry 
cows and heifers will start calving in March. There's the matriarch of the herd. Not bad for a cow that'll turn 15 years old this year. Had 13 calves. Her first calf, she was 20 months old and continued to grow. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what they are. Anyway, till next time, take care folks.